In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, I'll talk about the importance of trading with the trend. We'll do some analysis of the overall markets, market scanning for opportunities, and then look at the trade of the week on VXXB. Okay, so let's get into this week's topic. I want to talk about the importance of trading with the trend. And it's something that we've talked about many times before, but I want to take a little bit different angle with it. Often used, but really never understood, a common trading cliche is to trade with the trend. We've all heard it before. Defining the trend is pretty simple. We can draw a trend line. I'll show you that on the chart coming up on the next page. But what's challenging is knowing the appropriate times to trade with the trend. So you have to differentiate between trading with the trend and chasing the trend. You see losers chase and winners lead. And this makes a little more sense when we take a look at the chart. This is the chart of the S&P 500 just for the last 10 days. I took a pretty short term view. And I wanna just describe for you how I approach the market for the last week. We have, um, whoops, we, uh, I was short at the open on Monday, short on the open on Tuesday, short in the open Wednesday, short on the open Thursday, and then long on the open uh, Friday. And then there were some intraday moves. There was a signal to go long there, and to go long there, and to go long there. So now let's describe how this all works. The reason I was wanting to short the market there, which seems to be counter to the trend, since the trend at that point was up. We can draw a line across the bottoms to define the trend line. The reason I was looking to go short was that the market gapped up into some resistance. And it was really a tough call. In fact, at the start of the day, I took some longs as well. But when the market started to break down, it went to the short side. And then we had that dramatic sell-off. Now at this point right here, this downward trend line was broken in a situation where the market was very oversold because it had fallen so much. And that's why I wanted to go long there. Now the following morning right here, I say short, why? Well, we are now in a downward trend. We have broken the upward trend line. We're in a downward trend as evidenced by the falling tops. And so therefore I want it to be on the short side. We weren't overbought or oversold because we were relatively bit where the trend line was. And it ended up being kind of a sideways day. The following day, we're still in a downward trend because we have falling tops. And so I was short there again. And that day, nicely moving to the downside. Now at that point, I can define a downward trend line. So I can draw a trend line, something like that. And the morning of Thursday, gap down on the open, but it wasn't extremely oversold. And by oversold, I mean it wasn't way down here, far from the trend line. It was in the downward trend. After going sideways for a few hours on Wednesday, the queue there were breaking down for the next level, the next move down. It moved down, broke the downward trend line when the market was oversold. How do I know it's oversold? Look at the distance between the trend line and where price was. And of course the market came back to the trend line, which point it got stuck. Actually had a short signal there again. When this upward trend was broken, taking it down and away from the trend line. Now finally on Friday, way down here, look at how far below the trend line we were at the open. And so yes, it was in a downward trend and the common way to take that would be to trade with the trend, which would be to go short. However, you don't want to go short a market that is really oversold. We had one, two, three, four days in a row of downside move. We gapped down heavily oversold, way below the trend line, and therefore it was, in my mind, a long open. We had a little pullback there and then another signal to go long there. So the point of all this is that you can look at the trend, but you also have to look at where price is relative to the trend. Is it heavily overbought, which means it's far above the trend line? Is it heavily oversold, which means it's far below the trend line? Is it the third or fourth day in the trend, in which case the trend may be getting tired? Or is it the first or second day? Those are two very different approaches to looking at the trend. And it's somewhat challenging, I think, when you, when you first hear it, and you might wanna rewind the video and watch some of that again, and maybe in slow motion, but it's actually quite simple. Trade with the trend, but lead the trend. Don't be the sucker that is chasing after the trend has been underway for some time. All right, let's get into this week's market analysis, starting us off with the US markets. And of course we have the 
S&P 500 ETF, SPY, which we look at all the time. And you can see that we had an upward trend, which was broken on Monday. And we are now in a downward trend. And therefore, at this point, we have to be at least bearish. We did kind of break the downward trend line right at the end of the day on Friday. So we could maybe go neutral. We'll see how the market opens. I think you take a somewhat cautious approach into Monday, but it was encouraging that that you know, four day downward trend line was broken at the end of the day on Friday. I think that sets up for a little bit of a bounce back. So I'm gonna call this chart neutral. Next chart is the longer term chart of the S&P 500. And it is essentially sideways. We've had a nice run higher. We broke this um, upward trend line this week. So although Friday's action makes it look like we maybe will bounce back for a few days, Looking out longer term, we've broken the trend line. And so I think that means we're probably headed sideways or perhaps even lower in the weeks ahead. So you wanna keep an eye out for that. Of course, I'll be updating you each week here in this video. Looking at the Russell 2000, which of course is the US small caps. And again, upward trend line has been broken. A little bit of a falling top there. Looks like we're starting the next move to the downside. We did close above the open on Friday. So it wouldn't surprise me if we move up for a few days to start the week this coming week, but probably it rolls over. It may not even move up this week. Best case scenario is we're gonna go sideways here under this resistance zone. So we'll have to see how it plays out, how the market opens on Monday will be important. Onto the Canadian markets, the TSX 60 short-term chart. What's the trend? It's pretty much sideways. Uh, we did gap down on the open Friday through this support zone, but the market managed to claw its way back to close above it. So I'm gonna call it cautionary neutral we could end up rolling over and moving lower but for now it's still inside that price channel that goes back a couple of weeks so we'll call it neutral looking at the longer term chart of the tsx you can see that we've had a nice you know medium term upward trend over the last couple of months but longer term we're really just stuck in this sideways range that we've been in for a couple of years really the tsx really underperforming because of its heavy weighting to commodities which haven't done all that well we have some indecision up here. Those are called dojis, very small range candles. And that could be the start of a rollover. Don't see it really strong yet, but of course that action on Friday, a bit of a concern. So we'll keep an eye on that. TSX Venture, heavily uh, weighted to the mining stocks and to cannabis stocks. And it's building a nice ascending triangle. After breaking the downward trend line right there, now building the rising bottom, what we wanna watch for is a breakout out of that pattern, that would be a bullish signal for the microcap Canadian stocks. On to currencies, been pretty volatile in the currency market lately. Of course, uh, Europe indicating that they're gonna have to do more quantitative easing to uh, stimulate the European economy, which is showing slow growth. That was good for the US dollar, if you are a bull anyway, it was good, as the US dollar jumped on that news and we are now up to resistance again. So if you recall from past weeks, I was concerned about the break of that upward trend line, that when that happens, you're either gonna go sideways or you're gonna roll over and head lower. So far, it looks more likely that we're gonna go sideways and build an ascending triangle pattern, something like that. And so we probably have a little bit more upside next week before it stalls at those highs. And then I think it'll come back and just go in that sideways pattern for a little while. Not likely to break out through that, could happen, but it's not likely. Canadian dollar has had a couple of bad weeks in a row. You can see that the downward trend line is still intact. We've talked about that a few weeks in a row now. And this week, more selling pressure after the failed attempt at a breakout the previous week. And I think that keeps us in this downward sloping channel. So you wanna stay bearish on the Canadian dollar. Interest rates, we always look at the TLT, which is a 20 year treasury bond chart. If this is going up, interest rates are going down. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a pretty strong down move, and last week we made it all back for the most part. And that means we are still in what's called a cup and handle pattern. So you have resistance and you have a cup here. And uh, what the thing we want to watch for is whether we can break through that resistance level. I don't think it's going to happen next week. It'll probably go sideways for a little while, but lots of volatility in the last two weeks, making it a little more interesting than it has been. On to commodities. Gold chart, talked about this last week, the upward trend line was broken, a little bit of a bounce back this week. I think we could get a little more of a bounce. The question is, will we make a falling top? 
maybe go up for two weeks, get into that 125, maybe even 126, and then perhaps roll over. And so if you are long of gold stocks, I would look at this as a opportunity to lighten the load a little bit because of that break in the upward trend line. I think the upside is limited for gold. On to good old oil, pretty indecisive week, basically closing where it opened more or less. We've got a relatively narrow range there. The market in that upward trend after breaking this downward trend line, but it just, it feels like it needs a catalyst to break it out of this. And right now it's kind of a dead place to be. I'm not too enthusiastic about oil stocks here. Finally, the fear chart, the VXXB is the ETF and we were in a downward trend line. Last week I said, watch for a break of this. Well, that happened on Monday and we've moved higher through the week. We'll talk about this chart a little bit more in detail, but it does show that there's a little bit of nervousness coming into the market and that could lead us to some more weakness in stocks. So my ratings then, neutral, um, neutral long-term on the US chart. I forgot to update this, should also be uh, neutral short-term instead of bullish. So we'll cross that out, same thing here, that should be neutral now. Neutral both time frames for gold and neutral long-term for oil and bullish short-term, you can almost make oil neutral short term as well. So the key thing right now is that the market started to show some nervousness. We've had gold breakdown. I forgot to update all my comments for this week, so I'm just gonna tell you about it. Uh, the US uh, markets showing some nervousness, but probably bounce back early next week. The question is, will it last? The Canadian market stuck in that sideways range. Gold trying to bounce back. I would look at it any strength as an opportunity to get out of some of the gold stocks. Oil's pretty dead and fear is rising, but it certainly isn't a big deal. Essentially what I said last week, volatility could be coming soon. Well, that's what we saw this week and we could see it continue. All right, let's do some uh, market scans on stockscores.com, try and find some opportunities. This week, we're gonna run the Abnormal Breaks US scan. I think last week we ran the Canadian one. So we'll run that right now, found 25 stocks to take a look at. And our job now is to take a look at those charts and see if there's any charts with good patterns. So I will cycle through these and when there's something to talk about, I will. So first stock I'd like to look at is this one, Pacific Ethanol, P-E-I-X. You can see the abnormal price action. Volume not all that abnormal. It is breaking this downward trend line, but it has lots of resistance here, fairly uh, congested in there. So I think this could go higher. It's gonna have a little bit of trouble getting through these peaks. I'd give this one a six out of 10. I do like the abnormal price action. I just don't think it's a quality chart pattern. Uh, we'll pass on that one, pass on that one. Uh, this one will pass. Let's blow up this for a second here. So you can see this stock has been completely dead and it came alive a little bit on Friday. You can see the really strong volume, but unfortunately, and it's a little hard to see here, maybe I'll zoom in on this a little bit for you, just so you can get a sense of what happened on Friday. The issue is that it gapped up it was strong at the open and then people sold into the strength and it ended up closing below the open. And so although there was huge volume, which is encouraging, all of these people that have been buying the stock for the last few months sold into that strength. And that's not a real rousing endorsement for the stock. So I think you probably wanna stay clear of this until it starts to show some buyer optimism again. Uh, ALQA, blow this one up. It's got some good abnormal price action. I wouldn't say volume is real strong, but it is breaking out through this resistance level from some optimism. It's a little choppy because of this here and a little choppy in here. That volatility makes the signal a little bit less reliable. I still think that this is a pretty decent looking opportunity. I always like to take a look at the longer term time frame as well. So let's take a look at the three year chart. And there you can see actually a pretty good looking chart. We've got downward trend broken, long sideways pattern, and now starting to show some life as the stock is trying to move out of there. I'd give that a seven out of 10. Nova Gold, just as I said, gold stocks maybe not worth taking, but this is one that hasn't really moved up lately. And it is breaking its downward trend line from a rising bottom from pretty low volatility. So on the daily time frame, I like it. One weakness, not very good volume to support the price action. Let's take a look at the three year chart just to get that longer term perspective on the stock. So we'll jump here and click on three year. And you can see that that long term cycle of falling tops is just getting broken right there. Um, it's 
kind of borderline. I didn't draw that line exactly right. So it's a little bit off, fairly strong resistance in that zone. I'm going to give that one a six out of 10. Uh, Globus Maritime, GLBS, uh, really strong volume on Friday, 3 million shares, much higher than normal. Good price action going to be some resistance in there a lot of stock traded at those prices and when people have been holding a stock at a higher price and it gets back to what they've been sitting at for months they're going to sell into the strength because they're tired of being a loser so that's one thing that's going to impede the stock moving higher i'd give this a six out of ten i think we got just a few more charts to go and then we'll move on to the trade of the week and again i just pause when i see something that uh, has an interesting chart pattern if you want to learn more about how to read chart patterns, that's something you can learn in my different courses available at stockscores.com. Uh, just go into the trader training area. You can learn more about those courses. Here's ERII. Good abnormal price action, good abnormal volume, breaking from relatively low volatility, breaking the downward trend line. The issue is that it will run into resistance at the old highs at $10. And so your risk reward potential is about one to one. And I like at least two to one. And so for that reason, I'll give this a five out of 10. All right, so that's the market scan. Let's uh, jump into the trade of the week. And I'm gonna jump back to stock scores actually for a moment because I wanna make sure everyone's aware that I do a, a weekly email that is free. It's the free weekly newsletter. So if you go to stock scores analysis, click on free weekly newsletter and you can sign up. You just put in your email address. There's nothing else required. And every week on Monday, I will send you my market commentary. I have a little teaching lesson um, linked to this video in that uh, email as well. And then I also, uh, pick some stocks to consider. And last week, I was concerned about a pullback in the market. And so one of the stocks that I featured, which is actually not even the stock, it's an ETN, was the VXXB, which is the volatility index. And this is how the chart looked last week. And my concern was probably we're going to see a pullback in the market. If we do, this is one of the vehicles that will move higher. I also mentioned the QID, which had a very similar looking chart, and SDS. So let's now jump back to the chart as it looks this week. And this is the VXXB on an intraday basis. This was Monday, which is when that newsletter went out. That was the closing price on Monday when I said VXXB was worth considering. And again, remember, this is a free newsletter. You don't have to pay for this advice. Just I do this every week. You just got to sign up. But that vehicle moved nicely higher as the market had a little bit of a corrective action. That's about a 10% gain for four days. So you know, not day trading type crazy moves, but if you're a more conservative swing trader to make 10% in four days, who's going to complain about that? That's more than uh, most mutual funds make in a year. All right, so that's about all for me this week. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think with your comments and uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, all that good stuff. Most importantly, trade well.